Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me today. So today's vlog is going to be all about my spring sewing plans and I've got one knitting project to share with you too. As I'm filming this video, the sun is shining and it's starting to feel a bit more like spring. I can see some daffodils outside. Um, so I'm really looking forward to starting to plan my spring wardrobe. And I've got some lovely fabrics to share with you. A couple from my stash that I've been planning to use for a while and a couple of new fabrics too. So let's go. Before I get started talking about my new fabrics and my spring sewing plans, I thought I'd share with you what I'm wearing today. So today I said it's quite sunny outside and it's starting to feel a little bit mild in temperature. So I thought I'd wear um, one of my favourite dresses to wear at this time of year. And it's this pattern here. It's the Cassiope dress or Cassiope dress um, by I Am Patterns. And it's a lovely smock dress. Um, it's designed to be quite loose fitting. It's got a lovely bat wing sleeve detail and then it's raglan sleeves too um, and just kind of a fairly simple high neck and it's just a really quick um, simple sew but I think it's a lovely one for this time of year because um, if you kind of make it in a sort of floaty fabric um, it's nice and lightweight and cool if it's starting to get a bit hot but equally if it gets a bit colder it looks really good with a cardigan over the top too and a pair of tights. So that's the I Am Cassiope dress. I made the smallest size in this and it is designed to be oversized so there's plenty of room because it is a smock style dress. Um, I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like the full length. Um, I made this version, I've made a couple of versions and I think this one's my favourite and I made it in this viscose lawn, it's a dead stock fabric from Sew Me Sunshine so there wasn't much of it available and I was really pleased to get some. And it's a lovely sort of selection of colours of florals, um, kind of pinks and purples and creams. And I really like the florals and they really make me feel like a bit spring-like. Um, so yeah, I really love wearing this one. But it's a really comfy, um, easy, relaxed dress to wear. Um, so that's what I'm wearing today. But let me get started on my fabrics and plans. So the first fabric I have to share with you is one I bought last year. But I'm not sure if I included it in a fabric haul at the time because I wasn't planning to um, do anything with it for a while. And it's this um, viscose linen fabric. And it's a lovely um, navy and white um, and it's got this lovely print on it. It's, I think it's kind of like a large scale leaf print, but it almost makes me kind of, get, I think it almost has an animal print sort of vibe, a bit like a zebra print too, um, because of the stripes. And I really liked it. I thought it was a really pretty print and really nice for sort of spring and summer. And I bought this um, from System and Tarka and I had a particular um, pattern in mind that I wanted to make. But at the time I bought it, it wasn't really the right time of year to make it. So I popped it away and knew I'd get it out again when the weather started getting warmer. So that's the fabric, it's a viscose linen um, and it's lovely because it's kind of got the texture of linen, a little bit of roughness to it and texture, uh, but then it's got a bit more drape, so it's not crisp like linen, it's got a lovely drape from viscose, but it still feels quite substantial, um, which I like. So um, the pattern I'm planning to make with this one is this pattern here, the Zadie jumpsuit by Paper Theory, only I'm planning to make a play suit version, so I'm planning to make the short sleeves and then also a short length version. Um, I actually made one version of this last year and I put up a picture of me wearing it. Again, it's a play suit version and this again was in a viscose linen and that one I got from Minerva and if they've still got that fabric in stock I'll um, include a link below because it's really lovely fabric and really vibrant. Um, and I really enjoyed sewing it and I really enjoyed wearing it and as it got towards the end of summer I thought I could really do with another one of these in my wardrobe because it's so practical to wear. And with small children, if you're kind of running around, there's no risk of any skirt flying up because it's a play suit. And yeah, it was really comfy to wear too. So I thought I'd really like to make another one. And then I think in autumn, I saw this fabric on the System and Tarka website and thought that would be perfect for another version. So I snapped it up then, but as I said, I've kept it till now and it feels like now's the time to get sewing with this one. So the Zadie jumpsuit is a really lovely pattern. It's a wrap style jumpsuit, so there aren't any um, fastenings or buttons or zips or anything. It's wrapped up and the belt gives the shape to it. It's got a bias bound neck edge, which is really a nice one to sew. It's quite a satisfying thing to do, I think. You can either make it um, with these sort of, um, sort of um, grown on short sleeves or add on longer sleeves. And then it's got quite a loose fitting trouser, or I said you can crop it off to make it into shorts. And it's got pockets and little pleats as well. Some really lovely details there. I really enjoyed sewing my first version, so I'm really looking forward to sewing this version too. So um, I hope that will be done um, in time for when the weather gets warmer. I'll look forward to showing you that one in a makes video sometime soon. My next spring sewing plan is using a pattern I've used a couple of times recently um, and I think I'm going to get a lot of wear out of um, in the spring summertime. Um, I haven't got too many sort of t-shirts I've sewn myself in my wardrobe so I wanted to add a few extra ones to my wardrobe because I do get a lot of wear out of t-shirts with jeans and skirts and shorts and that sort of thing. So I've been looking for some nice um, fabrics and patterns to make some t-shirts out of and I'm planning to make another t-shirt using this pattern which is a paper cut Kyoto tee and sweater. 
And um, it comes in two different variations, a sweater and a tee. It's got this lovely sleeve ruffle, which is a piece I really like, and quite a boxy shape, and otherwise it's quite a basic t-shirt design with slightly dropped sleeves, and I do quite like a dropped sleeve. And so I'm planning to make it in this lovely um, bamboo jersey. I've made one version in bamboo jersey already, and I'll put a picture up in this navy bamboo jersey that I got from Sister Mintaka. And I really like bamboo jersey, I love the drape, and I love the feel of it, and I love that it's really breathable as well, so it'll be perfect for when the weather gets warmer. So I bought some more and this came from Ray Stitch because I found they also had some bamboo jersey which is 100% um, bamboo with elastane added in. So I guess 95% bamboo, I think it was 5% elastane but no cotton or any other um, materials added in. So it's really drapey in the full sort of effect of the bamboo. And I got it in this lovely red colour. I've already actually cut this one up so I've just got the little bit left. But you can see from this bit the lovely drape of it and I think it works really well with a boxy t-shirt pattern like the Kyoto tee. So I'm really looking forward to having another version of this in my wardrobe. I'm planning to do it with the ruffles because I think with a plain fabric the ruffle makes a really nice statement. So I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up and I'm sure I'll get a lot of wear out of that one too. But that's the Kyoto tee and this lovely drapey bamboo jersey in this bright red colour. The next fabric I've got to show you is a new fabric that I bought this month and it's another fabric that I'd like to turn into a t-shirt. And it's this fabric here, so it's quite a fun one. Um, I got this from Fabric Godmother and it's actually a cotton pointel, so it's got these lovely um, little pointel sort of features here as you can see. So it's 100% cotton but it's got a lot of stretch to it um, and it's quite soft. But it's a little bit thicker I think than, um, than say the bamboo jersey or even a cotton jersey. It's a bit chunkier maybe because of the way it's been knitted together by the machines. Um, but yeah it's lovely, it's kind of mustard colour with this leopard print on. And I've never sewn with a pointel before so I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. Um, yeah I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really not sure what to expect from it and how well it'll work um, with a t-shirt, but I wanted to give it a try. Um, so that I've got a few different options for patterns for this one, I'm not sure which one I'm going to go for. Uh, one option I think is the paper cut Kyoto t-shirt, but because it's um, quite a sort of busy fabric, I would just make it without the ruffles and keep it quite straightforward. And that's quite a boxy oversized t-shirt, which I think might work quite nicely with this fabric, kind of tucked into a pair of jeans. Um, the next option I thought might be a good option for it is the Stellanti, which is this pattern here. This is a free pattern by French Navy and I've made a couple of versions of it and I do like it a lot. It's got a nice feature of a little roll up um, cuff which I thought might work quite nicely with this fabric. Um, another one that is a quite basic um, boxy tee again, a bit like the Kyoto tee but perhaps not quite as oversized as the Kyoto tee. The, um, where the sleeve sits is slightly different, it almost sits slightly dropped, just off the shoulder I'd say. That's my only concern with making the Stellanti in this fabric, because the seam sits just slightly off the shoulder, I'm not sure, because this fabric's a little bit thicker, whether it might look a bit bulky on the shoulders, and I do have quite angular square shoulders, so I wasn't sure if it might look a bit too bulky there with the Stellanti. And the other option I thought of, um, which is one I haven't actually made as a t-shirt, but I've made as a dress, is from this book here, the Make It Simple book by Tilling the Buttons, and it's the Tabitha T. Um, so that's, these are the line drawings, it's a really basic t-shirt, um, I think it comes up slightly more fitted from what I've seen um, on Instagram when I've looked at other people's, it comes up slightly more fitted than either of the other t-shirt patterns I've mentioned, but I just wanted to make this short sleeve version here, again it's got a crew neck, quite straightforward um, construction. I've made a couple of Tabitha dresses and I've adjusted the pattern slightly to fit me better now, I needed a forward shoulder adjustment on it, um, so I know that's one that would fit. Um, it's just whether I want a slightly more fitted t-shirt or not. So I need to have a think about it, but I'm looking forward to giving it a try sewing with this cotton pointel fabric. And I think it'll be a fun t-shirt, whichever pattern I use. But if you have any opinions on which t-shirt pattern you think might work, whether I go for a baggier style or a slightly more fitted, or if there are any other t-shirt patterns you think might be, be good, do let me know. <laughs> So that's that fabric there. But yeah, it's really nice. And I'm, I always like trying to um, work with new fabrics, like the bamboo jersey that I only sewed with that fairly recently, and it was nice to see how it worked. So yeah, it'll be nice to try this cotton pointel. And the Fabric Godmother have a whole range of colours in this. They're all really tempting. So do have a look on the website if you like this fabric. There are a few different variations if they haven't sold out already. But I'll include a link below. So the next two fabrics I've got to share with you, one is for my stash and one is a new fabric. And they, I plan to make two of my Make 9 2021 garments with these fabrics. And if you haven't seen it, I'll include a link below. But I've done a vlog talking all about nine patterns I want to sew this year. And there's a hashtag on Instagram. Um, and you basically pick sort of nine patterns either to challenge yourself or to kind of give you some structure for the year. And there were nine patterns I had in mind I wanted to sew. And these are two of them that I'm hoping to get done in spring. 
And the first one is using this lovely fabric here, and it's a swim fabric. And I got this from System and Tark. Actually, I got this as a present. I asked my husband to get it for me for Christmas because it was, I think it's a Liberty swim fabric and it was quite expensive. So um, it, the good thing is though, you don't need too much for swimwear, I find. So that's always good if it's a bit pricey that you don't actually have to buy too much. But it's lovely, it's this black fabric with lots of little speckles. And if you've seen my Make 9 2021 sewing plans vlog, you'll have seen this fabric before and you'll know that I want to turn it into the Pilates swimsuit by Opian. So here's the pattern, so you can see how the swimsuit looks. So it's a one-piece um, swimsuit with a bow tie at the front, a little sort of arch detail at the back, and it's got a high waist and um, high leg knickers. Um, and I really like the details on this swimsuit. And I actually made a toile of this pattern just before Christmas, and I put a picture up of me wearing that one, so you can see what the swimsuit looks like. And um, I made that in some cheap um, swimsuit fabric I got in the sale, so I was quite pleased to be able to give that a go, cutting into that fabric before I cut into this lovely fabric. And after I made that toile, I knew I needed to make a couple of adjustments. Um, I've got quite a long body and it felt like it was pulling a little bit down the sides. So I've lengthened the sides a bit to give me a bit more room. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a try in this fabric. And we have got a family holiday booked for later in the summer, just in the UK. But I'm hoping I might be able to get this one out, maybe on the beach. Um, it, I think hopefully it should be um, quite okay to use with the children because it does cover up enough. Um, it's not too like, much like a string bikini or anything, which I just couldn't wear with the children at all. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go. And that'll be a bit of a fun sew and something a bit different. So that's the opium pilatus and this lovely um, swim fabric from System and Tarka. So the next fabric I've got to show you is another one that I'm planning to use for one of my Make Nine plans. And the pattern I want to use for the next fabric is this pattern here. It's a Southport dress by True Bias. And it's a lovely dress pattern. It's actually one that I've wanted to make ever since I started sewing. I think it's been out for a few years now. And I saw it quite early on and thought, oh, I really like the look of that. And I don't know why I haven't made it before, but that's why I put it on my make line this year, because I thought, right, I'd actually just finally like to get this, give this one a go this year. So I'll show you the line drawings. It's a, yeah, it's a lovely dress. It's kind of a vest top style dress with a button down bodice and a, a gathered um, drawstring waist. And then there's two different versions. There's a shorter version, view A, and I think that's designed for the bodice to sit slightly lower, just below your natural waist. And then there's view B, and the bodice designed on this one to sit slightly above your natural waist. And then view A has a sort of a knee length style shirt, skirt, and then view B has a long skirt with a slit at the front. So they're both really nice versions. I've seen some lovely versions of each one. But I, I wasn't sure I wanted to make this in what sort of fabric. Um, and I've been looking around for a little bit and hadn't found anything. The fabric um, recommendations on the pattern are lightweight woven fabrics with movement, including rayon, cotton voile, crepe de chine and lightweight linen. So quite a variety and I have seen some lovely versions in linen. And I guess a viscose linen would work really well for this too, like the one I'm using for my Zadie play suit. Um, but yeah, I just didn't see anything that grabbed me until a couple of weeks ago and then Somi Sunshine posted a fabric and I thought actually that might work really well for this dress and I really like it. And it's this fabric here, it's a little bit unusual. Um, so yeah, it's a pink and white, and um, the um, pink is um, it's, it's yarn dyed, so it's all, um, you can see it all the way through, there's no printing on it. It's a cotton, I think it's, um, let me have a look, it's 95% cotton, 4% polyester, and 1% elastane, so it's got a tiny bit of stretch. And it's got this, it's called slub cotton, it's got this lovely detail, this sort of um, shearing detail on it. Um, yeah, I think it's really pretty and a bit different. And the stripes, so the stripes will go this way, so they're kind of vertical stripes, but it's got these horizontal stripes across and this little detail. Um, and it's got a nice texture to it, um, but it's still fairly lightweight. So I'm hoping it'll work really well for the Southport dress, and I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. I think it'll be quite pretty. And the version I'm planning to make is the long version here. So I've got a three metres of this fabric, so I think I'll need quite a lot for the long version. Yes, yeah, so I'm planning to make this version here with a slightly higher waist and the long skirt. Now, I don't have a lot of long dresses in my wardrobe. Generally, I find um, they're not so practical when I'm racing around with the children. But I do love the look of a long dress. And I thought now the children are at school and I have a few days to myself, I could actually easily wear this on one of the days when they are at school and it will be quite comfy and lightweight and relaxed still. So I'm planning to give the long version a go and I'm really looking forward to sewing a long dress for myself. As I said, I don't have many in my wardrobe. So I think it'll be a fun make and I'll be really nice to um, finally get to make this dress. As I said, I've seen a lot of lovely versions. So I'm really looking forward to giving that one a go. So it's a Southport dress by True Bias in this lovely, um, cotton slub sort of sheared fabric from Sew Me Sunshine and I'll put a link down to um, Harriet Sew Me, uh, Sew Me Sunshine's website down below. They've got this in two colourways, this sort of soft sort of pink colour and then a blue colour too which is a bit nautical feeling. So they're both really nice and I'll put a link to these fabrics so you can have a look at those too. But yeah it's really nice fabric and I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. So the final um, plan I've got to share with you for this spring is actually a knitting project. 
I do love to have a knitting project on the go. Um, I do like to be busy in the evenings when my children have gone to sleep. Sometimes I like to sew, but sometimes I love being on the sofa and doing some knitting. So I always like having something I can pick up and put down on the knitting front. And I've just recently finished a knitting project. So I was looking around for what I wanted to do next, and I came across this lovely cardigan pattern and as soon as I saw it I thought I really really want to knit that and it is the Hackney cardigan by We Are Knitters and I'll put a picture of it so you can see what it looks like so I've never um, bought a kit from We Are Knitters before how it works is you can buy the kit, you can either buy the yarn on its own or you can buy a kit and the kit comes with the yarn and the pattern and then you can also optionally add in need knitting needles if you need them and pay a bit extra for those but you don't have to buy the knitting needles if you've already got the needles at home in your own, the size you need anyway so this is my first time buying a kit for We Are Knitters, but they had a really good deal on. And as I said, I saw this cardigan and I thought I have to make it. The reason is it's made in moss stitch. And my mum has made a couple of cardigans for my daughter in moss stitch. And they look exactly like this cardigan, only a miniature version. And I've always had real cardigan envy. I love those cardigans my mum made for my daughter. And I've always wanted to make one in my size. And so when I saw this pattern, I thought I've got to get it and give it a go. So yeah, they had a good deal on. So I was really pleased to be able to get the kit. And it came with, it comes with Merry Wool, which is a merino yarn, which I've never knitted with before. And I chose to knit it in this colour here, which is a mustard colour. And I think it's a really lovely mustard colour. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a summery one or whether it'll be one that I'll be knitting to wear next winter with a, kind of my navy dresses and that sort of thing. But I thought it was a really lovely colour and the yarn is so soft. And I wasn't sure if, because um, I do find that wool can aggravate my skin and make me itch. So I thought if I get this, um, and it does do that, what I'll do is I'll be able to wear it anyway with my sort of frayer tops and that sort of thing and use it as a layering piece rather than using it directly next to my skin and it should be fine. But actually, this yarn is so soft, um, I don't seem to be aggravated by it at all, so I'm really hoping I might be able to wear it maybe in summer too, over a summer dress, when you kind of get cold in the evenings. So we'll, get, we'll have to see how it goes. But it's so lovely and soft and squishy, I can't wait to knit with it. I've mostly knitted with acrylic before and a bit of cotton, so it'll be lovely to try a new type of wool, an actual some real wool to knit with it. So that's my plan to make the Hackley cardigan in this merry wool, and I'll let you know how I get on with the We Are, Knitter, we Are Knitters kit. As I said, it's my first time using them. You do get some cool stuff. I've got the kit in here, and you get the instruction leaflet, and it also comes with a couple of nice extras, which I think are really nice. It comes with a load of stickers, which I think are quite cute um, to use, and then you also get a little label too. Um, which is here, as we are knitters, 100% natural fibres, which is quite a nice label, and that's really soft and feels really natural too, so I like that as well. So yeah, it's a nice little kit you get, and I'm really looking forward to getting started and trying out making a kind of large version of my daughter's cardigans just for me. So that's my final spring plan. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting started on all of those projects. I guess I've got a bit of a mix with a couple of summery items, a knitting project and a swimsuit too, and I'm really looking forward to being able to share with those with you hopefully sometime soon. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this vlog, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed, then please do consider subscribing. And if you want to hear about my future vlogs, then click the notification button, because then you'll get notified when my new vlogs come out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!